Hello, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new weekly reading vlog for you. So, I am starting a brand new weekly reading vlog. I'm actually leaving Vegas tomorrow, so this is like the last time I get to be in the sun. Um, Bosco, come here, don't just sit there. Over there. Bruh. <laughs> Bosco's just sitting over there watching my mum. Don't know what I'm going to be reading. I just finished the Madison Kate... <laughs> The Hades Quartet in my last vlog. Um, so I don't know, I don't want to read anything that's like a reverse harem or like super dark and action packed. So I'm thinking like maybe I'll start a small town romance. I did bring a bunch of physical books with me on vacation. Did I read all of them? <laughs> no, I read two. Read two. A bunch of books on my Kindle. So I'll probably just click on a bunch of them and kind of see what is vibing with me. I have a couple, I think I have a Monica Murphy, there's a Monica Murphy book that I have on my Kindle that I keep putting off that I want to get to, to try it out. So I think I might start that one. I think it's a bully romance and I'm not like sure if I feel like that at the moment. So I will, shall see. But um, yeah, I just feel like I loved the Hades Quartet so much. Like I'm just like stuck trying to figure out what I'm going to read next, but it'll all be good. Um, I'm sad. Should be going back to New York tomorrow because it's like supposed to be gross and rainy, which like sucks. Um, I have some books I'm gonna read on the airplane, but they're workbooks, so I can't like talk about them because <laughs> these books technically don't exist yet. Um, which I'm so excited about though, they're gonna be so good. But they're fantasy books. Um, YA fantasy is what I work on a lot, so that's why I feel like I don't read as much YA fantasy like for my channel anymore, is because like I work on YA fantasy books, so in my spare time, I don't like just read them. <laughs> That's why I read hardcore smutty romances. So I'm gonna grab my Kindle, read a bit, and we shall see. Okay, goodbye. doing I spent two hours reading a book and I don't got a Zelda <laughs> that scared the crap out of you guys sorry <laughs> my family's house um they keep like all the doors open to like the outside world garden backyard and my cat can't go out that way. I don't know what you want, broski. We're going home tomorrow, then you get free room of an entire apartment. Not that this bedroom isn't the same size as my studio. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to come on because, yeah, I just want to give an update since I read 25% of this book by Monica Murphy, Things I Never Say or something like that. Um, I really wanted to read it because I've seen a lot of people like really raving about, I think, book two in this series. And then I've seen a lot of people talking about book one. Uh, it was all over like my bookstagram and like people on TikTok and I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. It's a high school bully romance. And they're both like seniors, but like it just doesn't like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't do high school smut. I can't do smut in high school. I can't. My brain is no longer able to read people under the age of 18 and all the shit that's going down in this. And just like, also like at one point when he's like bullying her, she's like, if you don't like, she's like telling him to leave. And he's like, I'm not gonna leave. And she's like, I'll like call rape or something. And I was like. And I mean like she has been sexually assaulted in the past too. But I was just like, oh, and I don't know. It's just, it's. <sighs> I can't do high school bully romances. I can't do a lot of, I can't do high school smut. Can't do smut in high school. I can't do, to me, that is, I just, I can't. I can't. So I think I'm gonna DNF it and start something else. Do I know what else I'm gonna start? No, no. So I'm gonna go to with my parents and goodbye. <laughs> what? What? Come say hello to the people. Why are you bitching? Why are you complaining? Eh? I oh, know. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Hello. I'm back in New York. Um, I've read two books since I saw you last, but they're both workbooks that technically don't exist yet. So I can't even tell you what they're called because they don't even have titles, but they're both young adult fantasies. One of them is a witch ex witch hunter book. And one of them is a island sea magic witch fantasy. That's all you get from me. <laughs> really good one. So I had a lot of fun reading them. Um, Currently, Monday night, I just finished filming three YouTube videos. Um, I've also 
spent all of yesterday binge watching Shooting Star, which is a K-drama. I started it before I went to Vegas and then put it on hold was at Vegas because like my, my parents don't watch K-dramas so I can't just watch them by myself. Um, I mean I could but I was with them all the time. Anyway, um, so I'm about to, I'm like on the last episode right now but I can't watch it because I need to edit instead but it is so addictive. Highly recommend it. It starts off really fun and funny because like she is a PR, she's the PR manager of a acting agency and the guy is the top actor of the agency and it's like they have like enemies lovers vibes to the max um but then it ends up getting zelda it ends up getting um super super nuts like shit gets crazy in this series Zelda, mommy does not want you eating her shit okay um i gotta watch her because like i still haven't unpacked my suitcase and so my strap like i've got things with straps and she eats straps on everything. Anyway, I don't really know what the point of this clip was, but I hope you enjoy it. Okay, <laughs> bye. Hello, 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 I'm here. I am currently halfway through This Vicious Grace by Emily Theed. This comes out June 28th or something like that. Um, I'm enjoying this so far. It's an Italian fantasy, which I'm a huge fan of because like the old language in this world is Italian, which is fun. So I understand some of the words, but it is a lot slower paced than I would have expected. I thought this was going to be a super action packed fantasy, but it's not really, at least not as of now. People have tried to kill her. But that's like the most action we've gotten. <laughs> Anyway, this is set in a world where around about every five or six years, um, there's like a prophecy that comes to light every five to six years. Like it's like a recurring prophecy where there are these like deadly beetles that come and like massacre everyone. And so the gods gave this gift to one person every five years who gets awakened and has the power to like defeat these beetles. And that is the Fenestra. Now the Fenestra, which by the way means window in Italian, um, her power is that she is an amplifier. And so she has to choose a partner within those five years of her awakening into her powers to then use that partner's power to defeat the beetles because the regular people who have magic in this world their magic is very like minimal like it doesn't like it's not very strong so you need the finestra to amplify their magic in order to defeat all the beetles and there's like five different types of magic and stuff like that um the only problem is that so far our main girl um alessa she has killed each of her partners um they have all died from her so the reason is because the Finestra is kind of like the Shadow Me series where her touch kills because she's so powerful and so only when she meets a partner of the right power and then she touches them will their powers merge and she can use them as like an amplifier. Except the problem is that the three partners that she's chosen so far over the last five years she has killed from touching them. Um, and so this is her like final try to find a new partner, except for the fact that like now the people of the island are revolting against her and are like, maybe we should just murder you instead. Maybe the prophecy is false and we have to kill you. Maybe you're a false prophet. And she's like, oh my God, now people are trying to murder me. What am I going to do? So she hires a bodyguard and the bodyguard has his own secrets. And that's what this is about. It's her killing people accidentally, trying to find a partner to save the world, but now the world being like, maybe we should just kill you instead and her having a secret bodyguard. So it's a really dope world. Um, I'm very interested in it. It is very intricate. There's like a lot of things that you're learning and there's a lot of like lore and history. So because of that, the pacing is just a lot slower than I would have preferred. I don't wanna say it's dense because like it's easy to understand, but it's just like, maybe there's, just, there's a lot of info dumping in the start. Maybe that's what it is. So anyway, we'll see and I'll keep you guys updated. Okay, I have to go back to work. I'm on my lunch break, <laughs> bye. Hello, I was not planning on updating you guys tonight just because I'm having uh, a meh day to myself personally. Um, I did finish the book last night, but I'm going to update you guys on that tomorrow. The reason why I'm going to update you guys now is because I did start The Beast by Jenica Snow, um, which is a monster Beauty and the Beast retelling, aka it's a smutty erotica book about Beauty and the Beast where the Beast doesn't turn back into a prince, he stays a beast the entire time. Now, the reason why I'm coming on is because I know how much you guys love when I talk about monster erotica. So, I hate myself so much. His peen, once again, every single time I read a monster erotica book, the peens are always the exact same. They are always as thick and long as my forearm. Every single time. That is how they are described. And I always sit here afterwards and I'm like, you know, I just sit here and stare at it. Anyway, that wasn't even it. I sat there and I go thick and long as a forearm. I go, you know what, I've read that before. That's fine. That's normal. Except I kept reading after that and she goes, it is covered in the same downy dark hair as the rest of his body. 
So it's a fairy baby. It's fairy. It's a fuzzy one. Bruh, that's so weird. That's so weird. It's fuzzy. I mean, like, it makes sense that it's fuzzy. Do animals have fuzzy? I'm not googling that. I'm not googling that. It's a fuzzy bean. And it's nodding. There's nodding in this. The beast is nodding. It, it, like a megaverse. I've never read nodding outside of a megaverse. I've never read nodding on a non-human. Like, this is such new territory for me. But this is flat out erotica. Like, it's, it's flat out. Like, her point of view, not so much. But his point of view, flat out erotica. But I'm enjoying it. It's actually put me in a good mood, considering that I've been in a meh mood today. But, um, yeah. I'm just gonna keep doing it. I'm exhausted. I feel like I probably look exhausted to you guys, too. I feel like I look kind of meh. But, um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep reading this. It's like a hundred something pages. So it's something just, I could just read tonight. Um, but I'll give you guys a proper update tomorrow. And, yeah. Love you guys. Hello, hello. Okay, so it is Saturday afternoon. I just did errands today, went shopping and stuff, so I haven't read anything. But um, I'm going to finally talk to you guys about This Vicious Grace. Mm, I don't even know what I'm going to rate this. I f the problem is me, not this book, I think. It's like a 3.5 stars. I'm so shocked. I know. You're probably shocked. I'm shocked. I have no idea why this wasn't rated higher. It was an Italian fantasy. I love Italian fantasies normally, but it felt like nothing really happened in this book. Like the whole book is them preparing for this final battle against the deadly beetles. And like that does happen like at the end. But like... I feel like we then spent the first like 300 pages waiting for this battle and her trying to figure out why her power keeps killing people and how to like solve it from not killing people and her kind of falling in love with her bodyguard but she's not allowed to be with the bodyguard. I think I just wanted a bit more angst from the romance that was in this. I think the romance, they tried to make the romance a larger part of the plot but it didn't feel like the, there was just some of the angst missing from that romance considering that it played such an important part in everything. I felt like it needed that extra like pizzazz to it that it was missing. I liked all the Italian-ness. That was a big bonus for me. And I liked our main character. I thought Alessa was really cool. I, I liked a lot of things in this. It just didn't like wow me enough. I don't know. So the real question now is, do I keep trying more fantasy books or do I just revert into a romance? I don't know. Like I said, I read The Beast last night by Jenica Snow. That was just pure smut. Um, did I enjoy it? Yes, I did. A little bit outside of my comfort zone because like literally the first chapter of the beast is like I want to breed this babe and I was like oh my god I hate the breeding kink um but you know it was there it was what you're gonna get so it was fine um highly recommend it it's like a hundred and something pages so great um here are my next two options for what I'm gonna read my co-worker is like demanding that I pick this up <laughs> which I do want to read this I do want to read this um I'm just not sure if I want to read this in this vlog and then I also have A Strange and Stubborn Endurance. This is an adult queer fantasy coming from tour in July. And basically this is about a guy who has to marry the princess, but then he's like, oh, I don't want to have this marriage and I can't because I'm gay. And then they go, oh, you want to marry the prince instead? Ta-da. And he goes, ha ha, fuck. <laughs> So that's basically all I know that this is about. So I don't know. We'll see. I think I think I want to give this a shot because I want to try. I need to find a good fantasy book. So far this year, is it one or two fantasies that I've read this year that I've actually enjoyed? I've read like a handful of fantasies this year. Nothing's really stood out to me except for Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And I think, did I read Jade Fried Gold? No, that was last year. Yeah, Daughter of the Moon Goddess is the only good fantasy book I've read this year. So we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, I'm gonna go try this stuff and I'll catch you guys up later. Oh, I'm started a new K drama. I started Find Me in Your Memory, which is like a classic K drama from back 2020, I think it came out sometime like around then. Um, so I started that one. It's about a guy who has hyperthemesia, which means like he doesn't forget anything. He has like a perfect memory. And then a girl who is like a top actress and she like has forgotten all of her past. Like she has memory now, but from like a certain age backwards, she has no memory and he's a news anchor. She's an actress, it's their romance. I don't know, I'm like five episodes in. And they're only 30 minute episode, which is like strange for a K-drama. So I don't know, we'll see. Okay, that's it, bye. <laughs> I just want to say 
that this is not a fun fantasy book. It's really fucking sad and depressing. So. Oh my god. Like, it's really good. But I'll get into it in the morning. But, um, if you have any triggers when it comes to, like, sexual assault, rape, suicidal ideations, attempted self-harm, um, be very careful going into this. I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Bye. Good morning. Well, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. Why do I always up to two guys in the afternoon acting like it's morning? I don't know. I'm drinking out of my wiener mug that I got from the lovely author Sarah Blue for her Megaverse series. This mug makes me so happy. I wanted to give you guys an update since I'm currently reading A Strange and Stubborn Endurance. I am currently, what, 100, 190 pages in, almost 200 pages in. This is like a 540 page book. I am loving this. Oh my God, I'm so happy. You guys have no idea how much it means to me to actually enjoy a fantasy book this much. I've cried three times, you know? So like I said last night, like I, I know when I first said this, I kind of made it sound like, oh, it's like a fun fan. It's not fun. It's not a fun fantasy. I mean, it is, like, there have been humorous moments in this, but it's definitely, like, a deeply emotional and political fantasy book. And I'm really liking it because, like, the magic and stuff isn't that prominent. Like, there's magic in this world, but it's not, like, the biggest part of this. Like, more of, like, the royalty and the politics and everything is much more of, like, a more important part of this fantasy series. There is going to be a map in this book. It has not, like, in here yet. But once there is a map, that's going to be super helpful just because there are so many different kingdoms and places and intricacies in that sense so I'm still very much learning a lot of it but I am also grasping onto it quite well. Like I said there is a huge huge trigger in this for sexual assault, suicidal ideation and self-harm because at the very beginning of this book our main character um, Velasin, he is gay. His ex-lover ends up coming to kind of like get him back and ends up sexually assaulting him on page. We have on page sexual assault and then as a result of it our main character basically wants to die and wants to kill himself and he does attempt to do so um on page as well and has those thoughts on page um except for his manservant slash best friend comes in stops him his manservant best friend is mute and they use sign language to communicate um which is also a huge part of this which is really cool and then um he ends up once you know he gets caught he actually gets caught like they get caught during the sexual assault that's when the envoy from the other nation comes in and sees them and is like oh okay well let's just betray you to the prince instead and so when he goes to this other nation you know they almost get killed on the way there and then they get there and his manservant almost gets killed and the king almost gets killed and so they end up realizing that there's people trying to kill them and there's a lot like there's trying to figure out like why people are trying to kill them and that's what this is about more so um which i'm really enjoying i'm very curious to see kind of like who is like at the forefront of this because i'm still very much learning it and it's been super interesting i really really like this fantasy world because while there is a lot going on, I'm really enjoying it. I'm very enraptured. And I'm also really invested in the relationship between um, Velasin and Kathari? Kathari? Kathari. Sathari? Sathari? Sathari. I don't know how to pronounce their name. The two of them and their relationship has, like, it's, you know, it's there. And it's, like, kind of blossoming. They're both attracted to one another. But Sathari doesn't, like, want to do anything because like they're very much you know understanding of everything that Velison's been through and Velison is still very much traumatized and going through a lot of PTSD and trauma from everything that happened to them. What's also really interesting about this is so the kingdom that Velison is from that he was originally like a lord in um they are real like while they understand that like there are people who are gay and non-binary and stuff they don't really like openly accept it it's kind of looked down upon whereas in Sathari's world it is like you know it's like men are allowed to marry men women are allowed to marry women there's an entire um there's an entire group of people who are non-binary people and I forget what they're called specifically um but they have their own pronouns in this as well and now like an accepted like it's, it's accepted as well that's that form of gender expression and so like it's also really interesting to see that sort of like dynamic and talk about in this world as well um it's very beautifully written but um I'm really enjoying it I think it's really cool and I'm excited to see where it keeps on going so I'm invested and I think it says a lot for this to be like a fantasy book that I'm actually enjoying since I said like it's been hard for me this year to find something that I've actually enjoyed that's fantasy so 
Although now that I think about it, both of the fantasy books I've really enjoyed this year, Daughter of the Moon Goddess and this one, have both been adult fantasies. Maybe I'm just not into YA anymore. I literally am like, I haven't done anything today. I literally just got up and like washed my face like 10 minutes ago because I've just even been reading all morning. <laughs> okay, that's it. Bye. Hello, it is Wednesday. I'm tired. I'm on my lunch break currently. I've got like three, four minutes and then I have to go back to work. So I'm going to end out this vlog here. I've also got 8% battery left on my thing. Um, wash my hair today. It's all gross out today as well. You know what? When the weather is gross, I always feel like I just want to like sleep, you know? <laughs> There's something just so soothing and somber about shitty weather. But here we have this book. I finished her last night. She was beautiful, delicious, five stars, golden. I love this book to death. So I will say though, the final reveal for the person who had been behind everyone, I kind of wished it was something a bit more surprising personally, but like, I'm not gonna let that deter from anything else. Like, oh yeah, I want it to be a bit more of a surprise. Like I want it to be like a more shocking character, but like, I really don't care because I loved everything else in this book. There is, um, I just, because I know some people don't like to read about it. There is one sexy scene that is detailed at the very, very end of the book, just in case anyone is wondering, but I love this. It was beautiful. It was lyrical. It was lush. I have barely written any five star fantasy books this year, like I've told you, and this was an amazing one. It is a very political fantasy. It definitely delves heavily into that aspect of it. It has also got a very lovely, like romantic undertone to it with all of our characters. It is a very character heavy book. It is just everything that I really love in a fantasy book. I really loved it. I love court intrigue and murder and assassination plots. So <laughs> I'm, I'm easy to please, but yeah, I, I tabbed a bunch of things in here too. So I must have to go back through and like highlight the things that I um, tabbed and things like that. So I'm stoked. Um, I'm going to set up a new vlog after this because I have three romance arcs that just downloaded to my Kindle in the last three hours <laughs> that I have to read in the next like six days. They all came in at the same time. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm gonna get, that's my next vlog. My next vlog is gonna be a bunch of hype romance books, which I'm excited about. But this was a really great and solid fantasy vlog. I mean, okay, it didn't start off great, but it ended great and that's the main thing. So yeah, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Let me know if you're gonna pick this book up because of me, I hope you do. I'll disown anyone who doesn't pick this book up. I think it's amazing. I'm sorry. I have no bad thing to say about this book. Okay, that's gonna be it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit button down below if you want to see more of me. Subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.